A table saw fences, even the best ones you can buy, they work the same today as they did in the 1800s. And as a result, people have fairly low expectations of what you can or can't do easily on a saw. Well, since the Inker systems work on a totally different principle, they're also not subject to the same limitations. And this is one of my favorite examples. You may make a set of 10 of those doors for a set of cabinets. There are 18 pieces in each door, exactly a 30 second of an inch wide, sliced right off the side of a board. Well, the question is, how do you cut 180 of those exactly alike when they're that thin? You know, the first thing that we learn about using a saw is to plan ahead so that if you need a bunch of parts the same, you cut them all at the same time before you move the fence. And that works great when the boards are wide, but for a project like that door where the parts are so thin, you'd have to set the fence up right on top of the blade in order to get the thickness that you need. And uh, that's not the safest way to go about it for sure. Uh, your backup plan is probably going to look something like this. There's never any question that that's not a hundred times safer because you don't even need any push sticks. But that's only one. You need 179 more to have enough for 10 of those doors. And that's where the problem starts. With a conventional fence, you learned not to move the fence until you have all the parts cut. But here you have to measure out a separate fence setup from scratch for each one of those 180 parts. And not only is that uh, typically time consuming, but it's definitely not the best way to get all the parts the same. Because an incra positioner is mechanical, well, none of those rules really apply. You can move the fence as often as you like during a set of cuts. If I bring that fence forward, five thirty seconds in between each of those parts, that allows the saw blade to take four of those 30 seconds for itself, uh, comfortably and consistently give us back perfect 30 seconds of an inch slices, exactly like what I used in that door. Now, typically, after almost a half a dozen very quick fence setups, you'd have a pretty random collection of parts. Uh, check this out, though. We can take all five of those parts that we just cut, lay them out here edge to edge, and they're so consistent for thickness that as you run your finger across there, it's literally impossible to tell that there's more than one piece of lumber involved. And, you know, this is cute, but this is certainly not why anybody buys a saw. This is intentionally just kind of fun stuff to get you to consider for a moment how much potential your table saw has, even if it's maybe not brand new or never was a million-dollar machine to start with. Before we run into the last set of cuts, there is a couple other things that I'd like to... Uh, cover for you. Uh, first off, every rib fence has to come off the rails from time to time. That's why the uh, TS systems have a quick release built in. Uh, allows you to very easily lift the whole setup off, hang it on the wall when you need to. Uh, there are situations where you might need to cross cut very long boards with your miter gauge where you need a completely clear surface. The other benefit to that quick release is it lets the fence assembly travel anywhere up and down the length of the rails, such as all the way to the left to uh, use that fence system on a left side router table. Regardless of how many times that you move this base assembly, it's very easy to get it back on the rails. I essentially, there are stops on the rails in pairs front and back, and there are three pairs of those stops down the length of the rails. Those stops guarantee that when you hit the stops, tighten the knobs, it comes back to exactly the same calibration point and exactly to the alignment that you picked when you set it up when you took it out of the box on the very first day.